Travis Wayne did so. Uh, another of the things that uh, uh, Sandra Tanner had not done research into, and thus her conclusion was short minded, was the linguistic science input into the Book of Mormon. And uh, it's uh, an ex Mormon. Uh, foundation channel video authorship who really wrote the Book of Mormon and in part four they separated it into uh, about 15 minute segments uh, they show a chart that they found that Sidney Rigdon had been the majority author of the Book of Mormon uh, this is actual scientific forensic evidence and what's Sidney Rigdon doing in the Book of Mormon if he didn't get baptized until after the church in, in December of 1830 that was her argument for why it couldn't be written by Sidney Rigdon so the other option is that they plagiarized the works of Sidney Rigdon who plagiarized the works of all the other guys <clears throat> so let's go over scientific research forensic research and how you can identify truth when the truth is not forthcoming for you so this is used for archaeology, this is used for anthropology, this is used in all fields of real science. Only psychology is the fraudulent science. And, uh, and so when, well, and plus local news stations that love to say, study show, yeah, they're making that all up. There was no study show. It's like uh, Cosmopolitan, five ways you know your husband's cheating on you. Yeah, it's all bunk. They made it up. But real science uh, starts by looking for patterns and then anomalies need to be identified. And so the way you go about explaining the anomalies with the patterns is by the development of a theory. That theory can't just be your own opinion can't be your belief <coughs> it needs to be testable so for example the Big Bang that's a theory the Big Bang theory there's a TV show named after it well it's all a fraud how do I know this because you can't test it they instead do the fraudulent science of symptom observation and claim that that's proof of their theory that's not real science that shame on those who were pushing that and who came up with that actually it was uh, the Catholic priest the French Catholic priest who came up with that and everybody uh, says it was Hubble and it wasn't Hubble I knew it was the French guy and so on the Deseret News comments the a young teen Mormon girl says no or no she was the R-rated movie one who misquoted Benson it was another guy who says oh why do you think they call it the Hubble telescope uh, no that's not that the uh, you threw in another fallacy and so yeah the Deseret News when I was indefinitely incarcerated without a trial and conviction of guilt being tortured for six years uh, the church had all of my comments removed from the Deseret News prior to then uh, I don't I think I started to do comments or maybe I was just commenting about where's my comments to the people in charge and then of course I uh, was told we don't uh, 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 yeah whatever 
but uh, we'll start with Joseph Smith Sr. And need to get all right so we're waiting for that video to save so I don't need to worry about any kind of problems there all right we'll start with Joseph Smith senior you know we want to study church history start with Joseph Smith senior the father of Joseph Smith see what he's up to so we type in Google search Joseph Smith senior <coughs> There's a Wikipedia page article on them. And yes, Wikipedia is not always. God. The Yellen screen. It's not the most accurate source because there are people who put in for footnote references uh, something other than uh, the actual primary source. Uh, yeah, like this one, Manuscript History of the Church, by, reproduced in Dean C. Jesse, The Papers of Joseph Smith, and sort of, uh, H. Michael Marquette, wow, he's been redded, oops, what happened to you, H. Michael Marquette? been banned from Wikipedia huh Wow and Wesley P waters so no no authors they are not authors are not primary source documents they are not evidence they're not primary sources they are what's called hearsay <clears throat> and they are not admissible in forensic science and so uh, they give his birth date and his death date and that's important if you're going to do a full thorough study of church history because uh, the time frame of when he died may have special meaning and bearing on it for example because Joseph Jr. is not dead yet so what was going on in the church in 18, excuse me in 1840 and so he is associated with junior one of eight witnesses notice they're all family members or people associated with the family married into the family never noticed that so again if you're gonna do research I've told you how to do it you have a paper for names a paper for places a play, paper for dates and a paper for events and you need to have when you write it in you don't just put Joseph Smith senior and that's it you put all the others with Joseph Smith senior and so then you go over to the event and you put all under that one page so that when you read the one page you'll say oh okay he's connected over to this and this is going to help you in your forensic research doing history research and so you see an error here because they use the Joseph Smith papers there they call it the papers of Joseph Smith it's the Joseph Smith papers guys but uh, they say golden plates that's an error it's gold plates we need to have everybody in harmony with this it is gold plates and I know they're 200 pounds there's a reason why it's gold plates that's why you cannot bias the information I'm really having trouble with batteries must be dying then oh crap I'm gonna have to buy batteries oh crap my other batteries I moved I think I moved them to the storage facility which is they're being held hostage and I'm having to pay ransom for them with no guarantee of ever getting access to my possessions so I might have to buy all new batteries damn hmm. all right 
So, yeah, we we all need to be in harmony. At least ex-Mormons all need to be in harmony. If Mormons want to deny what's literally written in their scriptures, that's on them. Let them live in their own little bubble world fantasy. It has to be gold. It has to do with the learning of the Jews. But that's not what we're going to focus on. So we're going to skip down to get to the main topic at hand because we're already 10 minutes in. So in the second paragraph of Early Life, where Smith tries his hands at several professions, see the... Sandra Tanner also fell for the one female author who rips Senior to shreds, just attacking him. She has no foundation for any of this. Uh, and uh, Senior actually is an American hero, and Sandra's stuck with that one woman's publication of anti Smith Senior. But uh, he was a Master Mason on May 7th. 1818 in Ontario Lodge number 23 of Canandaigua, New York. Now, they don't put the citation here because it says citation needed. Everybody knows the documents were found. So why the person didn't put in the citation is beyond me. I mean, we can probably look up the one famous Freemasons in history, in American history. Famous Freemasons in American history. There it is. <coughs> MDMasons.org. It's uh, the Grand Lodge of Maryland that is doing this. There's their seal. Established 1787. So they're a legitimate thing. All right, 14 presidents, 35 Supreme Court justices, 17 senators, 32 military leaders, 13 signers of the Constitution. Hmm. 13, you say, huh? All right, some famous Masons you might recognize. Uh, this does not list him. It's just a small handful. I do not see. Mark Twain was one. Oscar Wilde. Louis Armstrong. Yeah. Okay. So let's find another one. Uh, uh, here we go. List of famous Freemasons you need to see. George K. Lilly, member of something since 1947. 70 years. It's got Australian dollars. George H. Lilly, February 4th, 2020. Famous Australian. Uh, man. Mozart was a Freemason. Jesse Jackson. No, it's not what I was looking for. Come on, guys. There's the book of it. List. There we go, Wikipedia has it. So, list of Freemasons, Wikipedia, E through Z. <laughs> o, R, S. Okay. Uh, 
So Joseph Smith Sr., why didn't they have this linked together here, guys? What's going on? Joseph Smith Sr., Mormon leader, Ontario Lodge, number 23 of Canandaigua, New York, 1818, and it's reference 476. The Mormon Church and Freemasonry archive from the original? No! That's an author! Guys, what are you doing? Because Walter Smith, famous Scottish Freemasons, oh, God! So, because it's taking too much time, you're just going to have to trust me that it's out there. I have the book. And it's not the Wikipedia thing. But, uh, yeah. God. Alrighty. So, Canandaigua, New York, 1818. He begins as a Freemason. So, you might happen to come along and learn about uh, Heber C. Gimbel. You're studying Heber C. Gimbel. And there's this thing on masonry. Well, that's interesting. In 1823, Kimball received the three craft degrees of Freemasonry. So you're going to need to know what that is. In the lodge at Victor Flats, which is redlined, Ontario County, New York, in 1824, very next year, he sends a petition to the chapter at huh, Canandaigua, New York. Huh, does he know Joseph Smith Sr.? Does he mention him by name? To receive the York Rites. Okay, it's York Rites at the Canandaigua Lodge. Oh, this is getting exciting. We're going to have confirmation the church is true. Of Royal Art Masonry. And again, you'd understand that, wait a minute. He becomes a Master Mason in one year. In 1823. And I think it was 1801 when he was born, wasn't it? So he's 22. He just barely turned an adult. Yeah, 1801, June 14th. Uh-huh. And so he's instantly becoming a Master Mason at a young age. And the very next year, he's now wanting to skip ranks to the Royal Ark. Huh. Which is number seven in the York Rites. His petition was accepted, although, as he reported, anti-Masons had burned down the chapter building in Canandaigua. Well, how did we get the information about Joseph Smith Sr. then, if it was burned down? Hebrew C. Kimball's not listed, is he? Yeah, because he lies. Yep, so this is what we do. But that takes us to anti-Masons. And takes us to William Morgan. Alrighty. William Morgan, anti-Mason. And he wasn't anti-Mason, he was York Rides Mason, he was anti-Scottish Mason, warning about that writing a book, but I'm jumping ahead. You have to do the thorough research yourself, like I did, to learn all that information. And so he's writing a book on Freemasonry. I claim to have been a Master Mason in Canada. Uh, briefly attended a lodge in Rochester, New York, 1825. Morgan received the Royal Arc Degree. Just like Heber C. Kimball got approved in Canandaigua for. <coughs> At Leroy's Western Star Chapter number 33, having declared under oath, oh, we're going to find out more about how Heber C. Kimball lied, that he had previously received the six degrees that preceded it. Hmm. Heber sort of left that part out, didn't he? It has never been established, and yet he talks about Canandaigua, Royal Ark, Master Mason. 
Hmm. Hmm. Then he then attempted unsuccessfully to help establish or visit lodges and chapters in Batavia, but he was denied participation by members who disapproved of his character and even questioned his claims to Masonic membership. Uh, he declared that David C. Miller of a local newspaper publisher uh, had given him a sizable advance for the work he was going to do to expose Freemasonry. Uh, and it's not illustrations of Masonry, guys. No. Anybody can attend those meetings as often as occasion would permit. Sound familiar to anybody? <clears throat> so there was something else that he was writing about. He never got to finish. And uh, But you di can use that book to find out what a master mason is required to do. His duties and responsibilities as the master mason. Because we're about to find out another connection, another pattern. <coughs> and again, it does not mention Joseph Smith Senior. Okay, so it's disappearance. Alrighty, on September 11th. Huh. Well, that's an infamous date in both Mormon and American history. Yeah, obviously for American history, what happened at the Trade Towers. <coughs> Took the life of my friend, Peter Paulino. And then uh, Chile, the coup there caused by Poppy Bush as a CIA agent, which is why everybody was assuming it was a revenge for that on his son's term. But again, do forensic scientific research and you can find out what happened. But YouTube's a little touchy on this issue. So is the government. But I know the truth. But we're not talking about that. And then Mormon history, Mountain Meadows Massacre, and this. Dum, dum, dum. He was arrested for non-payment of a loan. And so, debtor's prison back in those days. He would never be able to finish the book. And so, where is he jailed? Canandaigua. What's he doing in Canandaigua? His home is in Batavia. Why is he in Canandaigua? The Batavia Press. That's in Batavia. So get out the map. Maps. And if you're using your Stellarium.org, your Urim and Thummim, type in Batavia, New York. When you're looking for 8 April 2024, passes over that. It doesn't have uh, the farm. Uh, I don't think it has Kirtland either. Alrighty, and then heavy thunderstorms, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Yep, yep, yep. Alrighty, so then we gotta zoom back. Zoom back. Alrighty. There's Rochester. Oh, look, there's Victor that's been redlined for Sidney Rigdon. And you would learn that Victor is actually in Scottish Rights territory. They marked it horizontally back then, as I found out, doing the research. And oh, there's Canandaigua. Okay. So, wow, that's like. Oh, man, I gotta do the full screen of the maps. Okay, so 10 miles is that amount, so it's about the width of my finger. Okay, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. It's about 50 miles. I'm sure you could just take out the Ferrari and get there in no time, right? Oops, 
you pulled an anachronism on LDS church history. They didn't have cars back then. They had horses. And so, even with a horse, you'd find out that they can pretty much only go about 30 miles for a day. And, uh, and so this would be a two-day journey. So he can't go... He can't go to the bar at Canandaigua and then make it home the next day. And why go all the way there? There's other bars. Rochester, I'm sure, had bars. And so, yeah, let's, let's zoom in. There's the 90. Shortsville. Oh, look, there's Manchester. Huh. It's almost direct north a little bit. It's like turn to the east but then there's Palmyra wow that's like not too far away at all so now it's two miles for about two fingers huh yeah that's walking distance if he didn't take the family horse you see how we're doing this easy breezy cover girl and so I uh, yeah, you learn that Hiram is in Palmyra. Well, why is he in Palmyra? Why didn't he go to where his father is the Master Mason? Because you can't have a family member in the lodge as a member with you. They can attend the several meetings as often as occasion would permit. Hint, hint again. But... Uh, uh, they can't be members. There's a big difference. And so Joseph Smith Jr., well, he was kind of jailbait. Not yet old enough yet. you got to be 21 back in those days. Why 21 and not 18? Isn't the age of an adult 18? Why would 21 be the age? Again, you need to know your real history and when things changed in history so that you don't pull an anachronism so when Joseph Smith was jailed for glass looking he was jailbait it was a misdemeanor offense and so what's he doing in Canandaigua then working on the book there huh. and then he's disappeared from Canandaigua they have a carriage that takes him to Niagara Falls and then Thomas Monroe somehow gets involved because he's dead with Morgan's clothes on him and now we have the book of more Mon Morgan Monroe huh. and in the other video I talk about how it could be uh, a mixture of or the uh, Jewish mystical uh, practice of uh, Noterikon uh, and uh, that uh, Thomas Monroe was opposed to keeping it a secret he wanted to report it to the authorities and uh, that would have put Thomas Morgan's life in jeopardy and ruin everything because uh, then they would find out that Joseph Smith Sr. was involved and blah 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 and so we don't know, but it could be the Book of Mormon story of Laban with Nephi trying to get the brass plates from Laban. We don't know. That's just a suggestion that came to mind when I was talking about it. And so, uh, yeah, again, read the book, Illustrations of Freemasonry, with the name William Morgan, and you'll learn the duties that would have been Joseph Smith Sr., who would have uh, orchestrated this, to have Miller take him with the carriage up to Niagara to try to escape him up to Canada and then <coughs> other there's a tracker who tracked him the sheriff got busted worse than the Freemasons who took him which was interesting he was just doing his job and he's getting punished worse than the persons who took the body of Morgan uh, and then Morgan decided to actually leave the whole North American continent and went out on a fishing boat and the fishing boat sank and then 
the son, descendant of William Morgan tells the story of how he was rescued, sent to the islands, <coughs> got a new wife, got a new life, uh, fell in his fishing boat again, was rescued, taken to Honduras where he started a banana plantation where now the church has their businesses right across the street from the plantation. And the guy is not aware that Brigham Young's the enemy. But apparently the church is. So, not cool. And, uh, and so, yeah, there's no mention of Smith Sr. anywhere here. But he's writing a book. He doesn't finish it. He's right there with Smith Sr. And what happens after this incident a year later? 1827 in September do you remember <laughs> why that's my favorite song earth wind and fire yeah Joseph Smith starts a book and a hundred and sixteen pages go missing hmm interesting wonder what was on those hundred and sixteen pages well it became first and second Nephi and so as we then go back to the picture that I took of the video, the slide presentation I would assume they had, or uh, uh, it depends on when it was. I don't know if it was a computer generated or if it was the film strip, you have the film frame on the card thing and you stick it in and dates me doesn't it but uh, Cindy Rigdon not much for the revision of the 116 pages so it's not Sydney Rigdon however because of the connection to Lamanites and Nephites yeah there's a strong connection to the Solomon Spalding manuscript that's a different thing we're already at 32 minutes for you so we're not gonna go into that uh, Oliver Cowdery not really. He has a line, just as Sidney Rigdon has a line in that area. But that's interesting. Oliver Cowdery is involved with the beginning. Hmm. But not really. He's mostly in Alma chapter 32, giving us our, our um, moral doctrine of faith. From Alma chapter 32, starting in verse 28. That's Oliver Cowdery. Ah, it's very uncomfortable. This is not a good cushion. This is similar to the one I had in Supermax. Just a flat thing. No cushion whatsoever. God, this is a prison. But Pratt. There's a little bit of Pratt. It's a thicker line. But still, it's missing. And then, of course, Isaiah... Yeah, that's in there. So who wrote the 116 pages? Who rewrote the 116 pages? They don't know. I do. I do. Yeah, and you already know who did. Jewish mysticism. Yeah, Tree of Life. The name Mormon from no Notericon of Jewish mystical mysticism or Kabbalah as it's understood and it's not a, it's not witchcraft God I always have to say that because there's always some dumbass who wants to equate it with witchcraft because their Christian background tells them so Christianity is evil Christianity is wrong they called all the religions prior to them heathen religions and if you don't understand that you're pulling an anachronism So like the Jews, the Jews were before the Christians of Constantine, the great and abominable Christ who created Jesus as the Christ, the great and abominable Christ that Joseph Smith talks about through the personage whom we are told is now Christian Jesus. God, 
he got so conned by this church. So yes, it was Joseph Smith Sr. Because Junior was put in the timeout. And then there's the thing that I talked about with Sandra, and she didn't want to believe that it was correct. She was giving Bruce too much credit. Can't give him credit. He was covering up for the church. And so chapter one was the preface, or section one was the preface. Section two is September 21st, 1823. This comes from the history. With history. And that's just repeating the same thing there. So then we go to three. Uh, July 1828 okay now it only says Harmony Pennsylvania so you look on your map there's only one Harmony it's north of Pittsburgh but what about Susquehanna River <coughs> again me I've contributed again to this it used to be called Harmony over in Susquehanna, but I found the website from that county, and they tell the story of how the name has changed over the course of time. And it used to be Harmony, but before the Smiths pulled into Palmyra, they changed it because the, the mail came in. They can't have the same name in the same state. And so, yeah, section three, July 1828 now Joseph Smith loses his gift of translation for a period of time how long is that period of time so let's go to four okay this is February 1829 and Joseph Smith papers confirms these are all in the right order here so you have July and then by February again Joseph does not have his gift back yet. But they say a marvelous work is about to come forth among the children of men. He still has to rewrite it. Hmm. February 1829. So then we go to chapter or section 5. March 1829. Uh, that as my servant Martin Harris has desired a witness at my hand. Joseph Smith Jr. had gotten the plates, testified and born unto you. He spoke unto you. And cause you covenant with me. You show them not. Uh, and this is the witnesses part. And so, yeah, this is this is uh, an attempt to try to get Martin Harris back so that he can pay for the publication. But he doesn't get to participate with the book. And so, remember how they all claim they saw the plates? Yeah, kind of no. They don't have the Book of Mormon finished yet. Joseph Smith still doesn't have his gift back. Section 6, April 1829. Still in harmony. I thought they were kicked out. Joseph lost his firstborn, lost 116 pages. The Methodist kicked him out. And so Emma had to go, and Emma's parents had to go. See, these are the things you do when you find out through scientific research. Investigative forensic research. You put the pieces of the puzzle all together, and what do you got? Bibbidi bobbidi boo. Okay, so Oliver Cowdery begins his labors as a scribe, except, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Joseph Smith doesn't have his gift back yet. Huh. Yeah, Oliver Cowdery's being assigned as a babysitter. And then we get to 7. 18, April 1829 again. Uh, to Joseph and Oliver. Uh, talking about the uh, John the Baptist and then Peter James and John hold the gospel keys not the kingdom keys and then eight 
again in harmony, huh? 1829 to Oliver. Revelation comes by the power of the Holy Ghost. Mysteries of God and the power to translate ancient records come by faith. Yeah, I guess that's true. I'm a translator. Church wants me dead for it. Because uh, uh, Joseph is right about facsimile number one in that uh, the learning of the Jews is to write from Egyptian pitcher glyphs like facsimiles and use Jewish names and tell a story based upon what they see from the picture. So you've got the Heliopolis creation glyph in Genesis chapter 1, for example, the Ogdo creation glyph in the Noah story, etc., etc., etc. And so Abraham being Osiris, no big deal. Joseph is right on target there, and all Egyptologists know this. They just don't want to know that or tell anybody about it. So facsimile 3 is a wedding ceremony of the prince holding hands with his bride before the throne. This is what coronation is involved with. It's not just one guy becoming the king, succeeding his father. He has to be married. So the coronation and wedding are all kit and caboodle together. So that's what facsimile 3 is all about. And all I have to do is look at the pictures. But uh, you, you see some information in the text that can be translated by Egyptologists who only know the learning of the Greeks and the language of the Egyptians. Rosetta Stone. Okay, now 10. Summer of 1828. Wait a minute, Joseph Smith Papers has this precisely in order as given. History of the Church, 20 to 23. Did they purposely forget and put this one in? <laughs> nope, because the Joseph Smith Papers says 1829. Bruce R. McConkie screwed this up and purposely put 1828 because this is a bombshell <laughs> and it is awesome it means that the Book of Mormon was written in one and a half months <laughs> hilarious and so yeah the Oliver Cowdery was just a babysitter they weren't working on the Book of Mormon out there at the Whitmer farm babysitting even though they still say Harmony Pennsylvania <coughs> but it could be Harmony Susquehanna River as their uh, cover story uh, but uh, yeah Joseph was still on a timeout it was not until after the Book of Mormon was completed <laughs> that Joseph gets his gift back so yes Sidney Rigdon was working on it out in Ohio away from all the potential troubles Martin Harris you'll come to find out was on the committee in Palmyra of anti-masons so he doesn't just take it to show his friends about the marvelous plates no he's concerned that there's William Morgan or night Freemasonry stuff on it as he's an anti-mason and uh, uh, my goodness five o'clock already uh, 45 minutes uh, and so uh, yeah again the Smiths from that point on he loses his gift for a reason and it takes a year for a reason they have to make sure that all the the hype didn't exist and that's why you see them go back to Martin Harris is their testing to find out so you still want to be a part of the book do you well you can be a witness oh you don't see him well that's because you were wicked remember <laughs> now that's what happened and so yeah when they found out that that the coast is clear 
they brought Martin Harris back in and resumed as usual as the book is now completed by Martin or Sidney Rigdon and the reason why Parley P. Pratt is in there is Parley P. Pratt was a member of Sidney Rigdon's congregation out in Ohio and so you notice a heavier concentration near the beginning and then a little bit uh, once you get into the Mosiah transfer it looks like and uh, the Words of Mormon area looks like and then near the end so just a little sprinkling of Parley P. Pratt and so Parley P. Pratt was the first one to receive the Book of Mormon from the missionaries he read it and there's the Mormon movie about him he reads it all night long and I want to join and then goes back to his congregation with Sidney Rigdon and they all get baptized in December yeah or he the Sidney Rigdon gets baptized in December and then Sidney Rigdon's paid for his work on the book by having to getting to work on the revision of the whole Bible and uh, having a Sunday Sabbath sacrament uh, with a sermon and uh, the children at eight years old being baptized and so that was some of the concessions they made to pay Sidney Rigdon for his work and they didn't expect that anybody would know about the uh, manuscript found which again if you use scientific research you would know so yeah I I didn't want to I, I went to Sandra to learn from her I didn't go to tell her my knowledge that would have been rude alrighty